I'm Richard Owen. I was born here in Hamilton. This house tells you who I am. I don't come from a family full of artists. The painting that I use, my drawings speak much better than I do. They're much clearer than I am. They, they don't stumble around at all. They don't, they're not lost for words by the time they get put in a frame. Channel 11 was just a, it was in its heyday when I was there and it just, I was able to make sculptures and do things there that I never thought I'd be able to do. That opened the door to Hamilton Place for me and the orchestra as their stage manager. It's a continuum. It's all, if it's out and it's on the wall, or it's, it's been the best that I know how to do. Owen. Oh, it's just, I, 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 computers just boggle me, boggle me, boggle me. <clears throat> yeah, these are, see, this is just another variation on the theme. They get, start to get quite heavy when you get into this weight of brass, and they're a little harder to work with, but it's, uh, as you can see, it's, I feel it's really quite beautiful, and whatever happens in here. But we're, it's funny that we should be standing here, because this piece is from the Beckett Gallery, probably in 1970, 71. And um, this piece is probably, oh, three or four years later, this, I didn't realize, but these are my wire sculptures of the violins and the dancing violins that uh, just, it's, uh, it de depends every year. I keep coming back to this and I keep coming back to wire. The drawings and the paintings, they're, uh, they're constant. Every so often one comes along that I don't know where it came from. It's not a fiddlehead anymore, it's some, some other symbol. A musical note or something, I don't know, but it's a... Uh, they're quite, uh, they're quite therapeutic. I'm Richard Owen. One more time. I'm Richard I'm, Owen. I'm Richard Owen. That's it, perfect. Hang on. I'm Richard okay, Owen. Let me point to you when I'm ready. Mm -hmm. I'm Richard Owen. That was really good. Just for safety, one more time. Mm -hmm. I'm Richard Owen. Well done. That was a good one. Okay. Do you want to talk about these pieces now? Oh, just, yeah. yeah. These are obviously an extension of the orchestra, but also an extension of the landscape. And again, once again, they're quite, quite kinetic. They move, they never stop moving, actually, in the, in the right place. They'll, uh, they'll, they'll do, they're pretty, pretty quite wonderful, I think. The, uh, um, the necessity of having some, the machinery is, makes it, uh, you're, you're using a, a brake press and you're using a roll former as a paintbrush. Untangled. Some see. Sometimes they move as much as they do and get tangled. <laughs> and, uh, but they're uh, they're sort of my uh, musical musical grass grasses. Go ahead. Uh, my whole involvement uh, began at the Stratford Festival. I was 14, 15 years old, and uh, it's never stopped. It's still going on 50 years later, and. Uh, it just one path has led to another path. I've been very fortunate to combine theater, to combine painting, to combine sculpture, and uh, always, always, always be busy, always having something on the go. Okay, this is good. I'm gonna zoom in tighter. Is that any good? Yeah, that was perfect. T tell me where you're from, Richard. Look, look hmm? in this time, look towards me here. Go ahead. All right. Yeah, go ahead. Oh, I'm from I'm from Hamilton. I was right here in Corktown, as a matter of fact. Um, when I, I was here, born here, born in the hospital, but I've been away. I've traveled a lot, traveled quite extensively around the world, uh, painting and drawing, mostly painting, and um, just. Uh, uh, I was raised here, and I was raised at the Stratford Festival and in Channel Eleven, and I was raised in uh, God knows where, the different places. Okay, I guess. Probably the wall, there's a chrome wall in the lobbies of Hamilton Place in the studio that I built. And that was sort of the very first big commission that required lots of steel and uh, machinery and lo lots of ingenuity. I was called to do something else and when the re Trevor Garwood Jones realized that I had now moved into some sheet chrome and things like that, he would ask me if I could fill this space. And that's just moved on from that. I've done any number of walls right across the country. 
And uh, that's led into stage design, and that's led in, Channel 11 was just a, it was in its heyday when I was there, and I just, I was able to make sculptures and do things there that I never thought I'd be able to do. Hamilton Place is the same. <laughs> that opened the door to Hamilton Place for me and the orchestra as their stage manager. But it also, for me, uh, the, um, uh, I can draw there. And in Toronto, I worked a lot on the long-running long shows in Toronto, and each theater in Toronto, somewhere backstage, is buried a drawing board, and uh, they know that, that that's my drawing board. Every single theater has a, a drawing board hidden somewhere, and I, when I go there to work, when I'm in a long-running show, I um, go in early. And my meal break is usually taken up drawing and playing, and then the drawing board gets, just gets slid away into an unknown spot. But, but uh, nobody throws them out because <laughs> they all know Richard will be back. That was really good. After I work on these for any length of time, I have no fingerprints because the, the pastel, I, I push. Is it like sandpaper? Yeah, it's precisely. It's, a, it's a, an abrasive, and so by the time I work on them for a while, uh, I could be a good safe cracker, I guess, if I had better hearing. No, no identification. <laughs> go, go ahead. Yeah. Some work on that spot, Richard. That's good. Very nice. Want me to get rid of that shadow? No, don't worry. I like that shadow. It makes it more real. It gives it more depth. It's all really good, Richard. Yeah, how could you possibly have any fingerprints or skin? Yeah, yeah. Wow. I, put, I, I have been known to, to, to push, it, push the pastel right through the paper in, in, in forcefulness on some drawings. Not often, because it uh, ruins the drawing, but um, I have done it. Yeah. Yeah, passionate. Yep, you just get going and you just want that to, to work properly and, and bang. Oops, it's a pretty heavy watercolor paper now that I use. For that reason? No, no, it's got a beautiful tooth. You know, you just finally sort of resolve it to, um, uh, there's a kind of, a certain kind of paper you really like to use, there's a certain kind of even masking tape you really like to use, and then there's pastels, and uh, there's some, are, some are very soft, some have got hard inclusions, which are really a pain in the neck. But um, you just get, finally you get this recipe, and you know, you have to have all of these in line to get to do exactly, you know, to get what you want out of the drawing. Um, the, the others can, any other, in, others are a distraction because you, you've been through that many years ago. Um, so it's an in, in, interesting, be an interesting cookbook to find out what, uh, what they, uh, uh, the artists, what artists swear by. They've got to have certain brushes and they've got to have certain by name or by just by the fact that they've had them for years. I have a couple of brushes that I keep going back to. And uh, pastels, I just keep going back to one particular Dutch pastel that I happen to like a lot. We might as well do a, a short interview right where you are, Richard. Uh -huh. <clears throat> Looking over here. Mm -hmm. This is good, okay. Start it again where you were born. All right, yeah, I was born here in Hamilton. Um, uh, Corktown, actually, right where we're sitting. This used to be the old Allen Gallery, and across the street was Bill's Super Donuts. And uh, St. Charles Garnier was a synagogue at one time, right around the corner of that little French-Canadian church. Um, I'm, uh, uh, I don't come from a family full of artists, uh, but uh, whatever it was, uh, you, were, you, were, you were asking earlier about my a rant or, a, um, or my favorite. I don't really have them. When I, I discovered that I could draw and paint this, this house says, is my rant. This house tells you who I am. 
now. It's uh, taken me too many years to put it together, but it tells you who I am. I don't, and, and the colors, as far as I'm concerned, the next level of that is the colors and the painting that I use. My drawings speak, speak much better than I do. They're much clearer than I, and they, have a, uh, they don't stumble around at all. They don't, they're not lost for words by the time they get put in a frame. So, how was that? That was perfect. Talk about how art has changed from the early days to now, uh, as far as the artistic community, not so much your, your talent or your production. Community here in the city. Yeah, in general. Uh, yeah. With the internet and the technology that's, that's arrived, right. compared yeah. to the, the manual dexterity that was required right. to what's been yeah. going on out there now. Yeah, I, I spent a lot of time, uh, I did spend a lot of time uh, trying to figure out the computer and how to draw with the computer and you got to be very good at it but it's it doesn't have the same soul for me and I've got some beautiful drawings some beautiful landscapes that you would swear absolutely swear were pastels and um, but they and they're nice but I, if I'm gonna sit down I'm gonna sit down over at my table and uh, I'm going to make a mess uh, I'm not going to sit down at the keyboard and, and, and play with my mouse. It's, uh, they're, they're very, very nice and they're amazing, absolutely amazing. When you see what's happening with computers and how they're affecting everybody, you see these eight-year-olds that can run rings around anybody. Uh, the future is unbelievable. I just, it's, it's, it's hard. I can't, you can't even fathom what they're going to do with them in the, in the present, never mind the future. I'm shocked every single day. And yeah, that was a good answer. That's what I was looking for. Cats was a funny one because the orchestra was a block away, you know, in a, the top of top of another store store on Young Street because there was no room backstage or on, in there or, or an orchestra pit, so they put them a full city block away, and all the musicians and singers would go there for that that part, and uh, it was all done by video, and that's a long time ago. Richard, why are you in this creative? world what drives you what what motivates you oh it's it's an awfully good fit accidentally it's an awfully good fit uh the theater involvement the dance involvement the tribal uh, element of it one just sort of complements the other and that uh, the times there's times that i just disappear for a few months and um, everybody in theater the people understand that and then when i disappear again in another circle all the artists understand that they know that i've disappeared i'm gone on, on a project or i'm doing something or i'm just so involved in whatever work i'm doing actually after each of the uh, i've worked on Lee Mises and showboats and that and each time i've worked on a long run of a show um, I've, and when, it's, when I'm finished, it usually gets me a ticket somewhere, and that ticket's usually somewhere obscure. And one of them was right around the world. And uh, I just then I go drawing, and I take uh, several months and just go painting and drawing, and then come back and go back into working in shows again. You uh, answered the question before I had a chance to ask it. About where you've been around the world. Ah, so, uh, so but but can you? I traded I traded a painting for a trip around the world. Can you specifically talk about maybe one or two of the destinations you've been to that that really uh, left oh, an impression? Oh, sure, sure. I don't. Uh, I, I can't explain why, but as uh, as a as a child, there's two places I really, really, really wanted to go. One was Japan, and the other one was Israel, and. Uh, and each one, one, one trip went, led to there and led to months of really good drawing. And the Middle East was just astounding to, to uh, no rain and just sandstorms and desert and, and w warmth. And I, I was fortunate to have my motorcycle with me on that one. And uh, I got into places that I never thought I would get into and got into uh, tents and got into people's families and things that I never ever thought I would get into. Mm, exposure. And just come back from Cuba last year, and I, only because I was looking at a sculpture in the museum of a, uh, a Cuban sculptor that I knew many years ago, Cardina, and I was looking at his sculptures, and um, this fellow approached me and he said he, he wanted to know why I was fascinated by Cardina for so long, and. Uh, that opened up all kinds of doors in Havana. He, he led me to print shops. He led me to other studios and other painters and all that. And so each each of the traveling like that, when somebody realizes that you're you're painting or you're drawing all at once, another a different door opens. And um, 
a, a different person, just a, a much, a very warm, 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 warm relationships because it's other artists. We may not speak, speak each other's language, but uh, we do speak each other's language. Is there any single um, work that you're uh, most proud of or is your best work still ahead of you? Oh, it's a it's a continuum. It's all if it's out and it's on the wall, or it's it's been the best that I know how to do. It's an interesting thing that uh, catch when I was a kid. The first piece of sculpture that I did was uh, I couldn't believe it. it was so beautiful. And here it is standing in front of me, and it was spectacular. Uh, and that was the hook. There's the addiction. And ever since then, it's that feeling of uh, you do something and out it comes, and it's just just beautiful. You know, Canada's good for that too, as far as. Right across the country, we have such a broad range from the Sunshine Coast to the Atlantic Coast. Uh, beautiful, beautiful suns, sunscapes, landscapes, waterscapes, you name it. And, um, but every one of them, uh, little sketches and whatever, if they're out, and I very, very, very seldom destroy anything. I'm very fortunate. Uh, if they're out there, they're, that's because they're my favorites and that's because they're done. But they were my favorite for a moment. I've actually purchased pieces back and uh, that I had sold years ago and brought them back into the family for a while. As, um, and there's certain pieces that people have their name on. When I'm ready to sell them, I'm supposed to phone them. Uh, Richard, when you have your exhibits, are they by invitation? Because you're not open to the general public, are you? No, no. Can, can you maybe talk about your, your exhibits and what you're planning currently, what you're planning on doing? Right. Well, I'm, I, I'm planning on an open house sometime late May, early June. I used to have them on my, at my studio on Markland Street, but this, this used to be, this building, this present building used to be the Allen Gallery. It was the Allen Gallery for about 50 years, and Allen was a chum, a uh, long-time chum and, and somewhat of a mentor. I bought it and I've been renovating it now for about six years, and it's about time to show it off. Uh, I expect that I'll be, it's a flexible thing, I'm, it's my studio, uh, there may be some exhibitions of other people, there will be a regular, a regular sort of open house happen, um, maybe every six or eight weeks or something like that, uh, but yes, there will be shows, and find it, because I haven't shown in about, uh, I haven't shown actually in about 20 years, so all, all of these treasures came out of the drawers. Um, all these treasures that are downstairs in the studio where it came out of drawers that some of them I hadn't looked at since you know, early 70s. And, and there's some just really lovely, lovely pieces. Mm -hmm.